Some years ago, Twisty Puzzle designers discovered 3D printing. Now, they could make a model on their computer into an actual physical puzzle. It was amazing. It was a really big deal, but back then, it was actually really expensive to print a puzzle. And even then, the designers had to have good experience with software that wasn't cheap. In the past couple of years though, 3D printing puzzles has become a lot more reasonable for people because some 3D printers are now cheaper than buying a single print from a 3D printing company. In addition, design software has become more accessible, there's even some free, high quality programs. As a result, many more people have become interested in designing and printing twisty puzzles. Some of them have even released their designs publicly so that anyone with a printer can make it themselves. That's what this series is about. In each episode, I will review a puzzle design that has been posted publicly. For each one, I will go through the process of printing it, post-processing, and then assembly. I'll then solve the puzzle and give my thoughts on turning quality, difficulty, and whether or not I personally think it's worth printing. So, without further ado, let's get into the very first puzzle of the series, The Slice Pentagon by Jay Widmar. Now the first puzzle I've printed for this series is The Pentagon Slice by Jay Widmar. It is a, a two-layered pentagonal prism. It has uh, these corner pieces which are the main thing that you have to solve, and then it also has these center pieces. Now, this is, now I also do have a, a single layer pentagonal prism, so you can see it's just a two layer version of this, except these edge pieces are not present on the two layered puzzle, which means that it's a bit easier to solve, because there's less pieces that you have to put in place. Now the turning quality is really good actually. I sanded these inner parts, so of course this turn is going to be smooth as butter. And this turn, I didn't actually sand this down. It's not, but it doesn't turn bad, it just isn't as buttery smooth. But that's fine, like I've never had issues with it. Anyway, now I'll show you how I built this. This is Thingiverse, a website where many 3D printing designs are posted, puzzles and otherwise. It's run by MakerBot, which is a company that manufactures a 3D printer named The Replicator. But the files you get here will work on any compatible 3D printer. In the Puzzle Makers group, many twisty puzzle designs are posted. Today we'll be looking at the Pentagon Slice, or Slice Pentagon, by Jay Widmar. This is the puzzle site where you'll find instructions, files, and comments. The description contains printing instructions as well as assembly instructions. The files for the puzzle are all under the files tab, and the comments section is where you can write what you think of the design. In addition, you can post pictures of your own prints of this design on the make section. So for this puzzle, you're going to print one of the center STL file which contains four separate pieces. You also need one center pin STL which is this right here and ten of these corners. Now let's go into how you should actually go about printing them. So this one you're gonna want to put this face here on the bottom because that way you're not gonna need any supports for this puzzle to print properly. Your printer will just print the layers upwards. For this piece, you're going to print, of course, with the flat side downwards, that way, again, you don't need any supports. And this is a little bit trickier because while you do still want to print the flat sides down, there's actually a hole in the middle of these larger center pieces. Now the printer will have a little bit of difficulty with this, but it'll still get the general shape and you can refine that shape later, so it's fine to print this without supports. After the pieces were all done printing, I laid them out and uh, sorted them by type. You can see some uh, white material left on some of the corner pieces, just ignore that, that's not an issue that most 3D printers are gonna have. But you can see that I put the pieces all 
facing the direction that they were facing when they were printed and uh, and the print came out pretty well because the inner side of the corner pieces was facing down no support material was required to have the print come out well and the same goes for the other types of pieces the split pins were printed with the split part downwards and the centers were printed with the exterior parts down in the design files the circle in the tall center pieces is perfectly circular but simply because of how the layering process works the printer made it a little bit lopsided but that's fine because later I'm gonna sand that area down so that the pin fits into it well putting the corner pieces aside the first step in uh, post processing and assembling the puzzle that I took was gluing the center pieces together the way the puzzle is designed there are two unequal half centers but for ease of 3d printing they're divided into different segments so I put super glue on the large faces and pressed the centers together I wasn't completely precise when doing it and it did turn out to be a little bit off but in the final product it makes no difference I took the two halves of the center pin and attached them together with super glue again you don't have to be entirely precise because you're gonna have to refine the pins shape anyway with sandpaper later on so if you don't glue it perfectly don't worry about it I then sanded all of the faces that were going to be stickered as well as the internal faces of the corners. I then used a file to smoothen out the rough surfaces. I covered the pieces in WD-40 to darken them and then semi-assembled the puzzle to make sure that the corners didn't need any extra sanding. After smoothening the pin and the circular hole in the large center pieces, I made sure that the puzzle turned properly and then it was ready for final assembly. To assemble this puzzle, you put six of the corner pieces onto one combined center piece and the other four onto the other. When doing the small one, make sure to put the pin into the hole before putting the corners in. Once the two halves are assembled, put some super glue onto the tip of the pin and then combine the two halves. Hold it a bit so that the super glue bonds and then the puzzle is fully assembled. So now you've seen how I finished this. Um, in terms of the overall finish of the puzzle, the stickers on the yellow side are really bad because I cut them myself because I didn't have enough yellow vinyl to put in a vinyl cutter. These white stickers came out weird. I'm not sure why I did use a vinyl cutter, but I mean, they don't look terrible. You can, you can just see that they're a bit lopsided and that's about it any case let's scramble and solve this to be good fun all right looks like a good scramble to me so the first step I'm gonna do is pair up any two pieces so here's an orange here's a white orange put them together and then put them here now let's look for the white green it is right here no, it isn't it's here. So let's put it there and then bring it up to these pieces. And so now we have a trio. And, and now what we need to do, okay, so these are already paired. So what we can do is, oh, I think I didn't scramble this very well. All right, I'll be right back with, oh, wait, actually, no, it's not solved. Never mind that. Okay. So since these are not the same piece, I'm, yeah, because I thought this was blue, but because the light in any case so let's turn this up here now this is in the right place and that's not where we want it to be wait actually yeah but we what we want to do is split these pieces and there we go and now we can put it into the wrong place and then bring this down next to where it's gonna be and then it'll pair up with this and be correct now what we do is we look at this and uh, the, this pair is done, this pair is done, but the piece in between them isn't the correct connecting piece. So what I'm going to do is this little algorithm that I developed. 
and there we go the puzzle is solved now there are a couple other cases that you can get but they're all very simple this in general is not a difficult puzzle in any case I definitely recommend printing this it is an amazing puzzle it's not trivial but it's also not too hard it turns very well because the tolerances were very well designed and I really like it thank you for watching